Good evening. Can everybody see and hear me? Or am I talking to myself? Can you hear me? Can you see me? No, Johnny, you're not talking. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Thank you all for joining another session of Let's Talk Sickle Cell. I am your moderator, Johnny. We have a very, very interesting topic today. We actually had a topic before, and it was so good, we had to have a part two. So today we're talking about sickle cell and relationships. And we have four panelists today. We have Dr. Enam Bankas. We have Isaac Tete. We have Madonna. And we have Prisca, AKA Miss World. So we hope you enjoy our session for today. And just so you know, for those who are visiting us for the first time, you are joining a Circle Life um, program. Circle Life was formed to educate more people. Or, uh, Circle Life is a support group for people living with sickle cell, um, people who are caregivers, and also people interested in sickle cell. So we hope you enjoy our presentation today. So I'll start, and we'll try to make this as very interactive as possible. So if our panelists are ready, we're about to begin. Our panelists, if you can hear me, just say something. We have a uh, Dr. Enam. Dr. Bankas, can you hear me? Okay, I think she's typing. Darlington, you can't hear me. Can everybody else hear me? Priska? Yes, we can. We can hear you. Okay, Isaac. Isaac. Isaac, can you hear me? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Darling thing, I think you have a problem with your mic or with your speakers. You might have to restart. And um yes, Mad you might have. Madonna, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, you're you're a little low. Can you speak louder? I can hear you. Okay, good. good. Okay, so let's start. Um, the first question we're going to ask today to our panelists, sickle life and relationships in general, how difficult is it? If you can share your, your views. So, um, Priska, let me start with you. Okay. Okay, so... My name is Chris Kadede Tete. Um, um, I'm part of Circle Life. So I'm happy to be on the panel today. So, um, Circle Cell and Relationship in general is difficult because um, people don't feel your pain. You feel it and tell them. So, you're feeling something and telling the next person that this is what I'm going through, this is how I'm feeling. It's because the person is not feeling it, it's kind of difficult to relate with me or to understand where you are coming from. So it makes relationships very difficult, not just um, on the romantic level, but even with parents and other siblings or family members, friends, everywhere. Like you, it's like you always have to explain yourself. And um, over and over again before you will be understood. And even if the person should understand you, it's not to the satisfaction that um, you want the person to do. And this kind of creates lots of um, confusion or um, misunderstanding between our, sometimes our parents, our friends, and then maybe your loved ones. So it, it, especially if the person doesn't have the disease or doesn't know much about what you are going through. So I think it's sickle cell makes it difficult to relate with other people. So all relationships included. That's my view on this. Mm, okay, that's a very interesting view. Um, Dr. Bankas, Mary, I'll come back to you shortly. Uh, Dr. Bankas, do you have anything to say? Hello, Johnny. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you kindly repeat the question? The question is, how difficult is sickle cell and relationships? 
Um, I think it's complex. Relationships themselves come with a lot of um, different issues. And then there is the chronic medical condition um, that is sickle cell disease, which also has, sorry, there's some noise in my background. We can hear you, go ahead. Okay, and relation, um, sickle cell disease also has its own um, complexities. And so when you put that together, the complex um, issues related to relationships and then that of sickle cell disease, um, it can be difficult, but then people have done it. So I believe it can be, um, it can be done. Okay, okay. Um, Mary, you can, you can meet and give your submission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sickle cell in relationship is a difficult one because people see you as you are sick, the person is sick, so they treat you as such and it makes everything complex, you understand? Yes. Uh, aside the fact that um, the fact that the person has a good soul doesn't mean say the person cannot do certain things, but they try to restrain you or try to tell you that you can do this, you can't do that, you get, uh -huh. so it's like it makes it very difficult for you. You, you don't feel comfortable doing what you want to do. You are always restricted. They don't give you the room to do what you want to do or to try new things and all that. And then the uh, families and other people also come in. It's like, ah, why would you, are you with, uh, uh, why are you with someone who is sick? And then a caregiver too, they'll be like, hey, caring for someone who is sick. How come? How did you have a child who is sick? Like you get it, uh -huh. so it's it's a very difficult one. It, it's it's very very difficult. Yeah, I understand you. Yeah, Isaac, you have anything to add? Isaac, if you are on, you are still muted. Okay, Isaac, are you having issues? Okay. So oh, Isaac, um, if I get back. Isaac, oh, I saw you on mute. Oh, Isaac. Yeah, I think they have said it all. So. Okay, no problem. Miss Miss World, can you you can give us a submission? Okay, so add to um what Madonna said, like um the moment you okay. open up that maybe I have to, I have special cells, then they tend to treat you as a patient instead of um, maybe a partner. So you, you, you don't have much say. Like, they always look at you like you are handicapped. Let me put it that way, like you are half human. So you are sick, so you can't uh, put in much effort. So I think that aspect of so, like being treated like a patient instead of a partner, that's also... Um, is something that makes the whole thing like more messier. Mm. I think from my side as a caregiver, I think sometimes we are overly cautious when dealing with people living with sickle cell. We, we, we try to err on the side of caution, if I can say that. So like, let's say, for example, if they want to go out and play in the sun, I'll be more cautious. I'll be like, no, we can play for only 10 minutes because it's too hot. You have to hydrate a lot of water, hydrate, things like that. So, yeah, right. It makes it very, very complicated. It's not anyone's fault, but I think sometimes we try to err on the side of caution. If you, if you guys get to guess what I mean. Okay, so let me go back on, on to the, the next point. Um, do you think you're missing out with something because your partner, family member, friend has a um, has sickle cell? Uh, let me start with Dr. Bankers. Doc, can you hear us? Okay, she might not be available. Um, Isaac, do you think you're missing out on something? Yes, I think <laughs> after a lot. Mm, because... like, 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 like. It's not easy. To be a circle cell, and people will see you as a cell. People will see you as a what? Sorry, I didn't hear you. It's not easy to see you as a circle, including 
family side and then we your line is bad it's breaking we can barely hear you if you can reposition yourself no we can, if you can reposition yourself we can barely hear you no we still can't hear you so let me for now let me move on to to, to Prisca while we, we figure out your your predicament Prisca are you there yes I'm here okay do you think I'm missing out on something because of, of, of your sickle cell disease condition no um from my point of view I don't think I'm missing out on something but then maybe um if I should have a partner, the person might think, um, it, let's take it like I have a partner who is AA, and maybe mm -hmm. we want to go out and, and have some fun, maybe swing. And the person is like, oh, you can't swim. So um, you have to sit down and let me swim. You see, I, can, I wouldn't be able to do stuff with him because, yeah, it feels like, oh, you can't swim because you get crisis. So let me just go. So obviously, I feel like, I'm missing something, but at the moment, I don't think I'm missing anything. And from my point of view, whatever I feel like doing, I'll just do it. Okay, Mary, you have, you have anything to add? Yeah, as, as, as a caregiver, I don't think I'm missing on anything, like caring for my, my child. I'm not missing on anything because whatever it is that he, uh, he has to do. He does it with caution though, yeah. And as a stance, I don't even know how to swim. So I don't think I would want to go for a swimming, on a swimming, whatever with him. Uh -huh. So I, I'm not missing on anything. We are fine, we, are, we talk, we play, we do everything. He goes to school, he does like, everything is moving on smoothly. Yeah, so I don't think I'm missing on it. I'm just enjoying the ride. Yeah. <laughs> But how, how old is he now? He he, is, he will turn four in December. Four in December, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, Isaac, can we try your, try your line again? Okay. Is it good now? It's better than before, yes. You can go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I think I'm missing something about both family side and relationship. Can you elaborate? Can you elaborate? Because I, I, I want to do, maybe people are doing things that they can't do some. Okay. Mm, okay. Dr. Bankers, are you there? Hello, yes, I am. Yeah, so did you hear the question? Do you think I'm missing out on anything? I think that in some ways I am, and especially with respect to relationships, because um, I'm overly cautious about the kinds of things that I do, especially now that uh, I have to understand the process and my ability is challenged. So, there are certain things that in the past I would have done free. So in terms of the things I like, so activities, um, hiking, um, going, um, climbing, you know, those kinds of outdoor activities that now I can't. And so if I am to go out on such activities with my partner, it becomes a challenge. Even now, if I want to travel or go sightseeing or things like that, because of the um, mobility issues, I have to put in uh, like extra precautions um, to make sure that, for example, I have a downstairs room or there's an elevator to move me upstairs. Wherever we are going has accessibility for me. So, I mean, it's a new challenge that I'm um, dealing with now. And there's not everybody with sickle cell disease that has to deal with those challenges. 
and then at the same time to the limit with respect to who I date in terms of the genotype. It's not, it's a personally set limitation. Not everybody has to um, limit themselves to those particular genotypes because there are options available to everyone. Okay, thank you very much. I think from my side also, I have um, set a limit on those I would date or be in a relationship with because of of the of uh, I'm AS myself, so I'm I'm I'm, lim I'm limited to who I can date. I don't think I would feel right. I guess I don't know if I'm using the right word, but I don't know if I feel right bringing in someone to the world and knowing I, I'm risking. It's a risk of them having uh, sickle cell disease. Because right now it's not easy at all. And then to have another one, and then plus the money, plus the emotional stress, everything, it gets very difficult. Okay, so our next question. So to our panelists, would you consider having a baby with your partner if you or your partner was living with sickle cell disease? Let me start with Mary. Would I consider? Knowing what you know now, would you have a, a, a baby with your partner if, your, if no. you knew you could give a, have a child that lives with sickle cell? No, 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 no. I wouldn't want to do it again. <laughs> I okay. wouldn't want to do it. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't want to do it again. Uh, Isaac. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I just wanted to say that this one is enough. I wouldn't want to do it again. Okay. Okay. Isaac. Yes. Yeah. But it's because that one I can have children with. Uh, Okay. Right. If she's a okay. Mm, okay. Chris, Miss are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so um, I wouldn't like to have kids. And um, maybe sickle, sickle cell is a greater um, part of this um, decision. Yes. So, but then there are more to it. But then let's, let me just limit myself to sickle cell. So yeah. I wouldn't like to have kids um, personally. But then I don't mind having a child with sickle cell disease. Okay, that's interesting. Because... Uh, um... Let me let me go on with you. So you, you, you wouldn't mind having a child with sickle cell disease, right? Yes, please. Can you elaborate why? I know this so like bring up a little aspect of okay, let me just answer. I don't yeah. mind let, let me say, say, yeah, so, so, let me make a disclaimer first. So all those this thing, this is just her personal opinion. What she thinks is what she thinks. Exactly. If you have a different opinion, that one is up to you. But it's her personal yeah, opinion. Yeah, so go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so you can go so ahead. Yeah. I wouldn't mind having a child with sickle cell. That is, if I have the means, um, if I have that kind of money to take care of someone living with sickle cell. Like, there are a lot of us doing well here. And we all have sickle cell disease. So I don't see it as one big deal to um say i don't because it boils down to me having the crisis myself and i know what i do so if i feel like i want to have another case and it turn out to be a sickle cell i'm not going to say that i'm not going to give birth or i'm going to kill the child because the child has to know i would like to keep it so Okay. That's it. Mm. Because I believe I have the capacity to even provide um the emotional support and everything that the the child might need. So I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Dr. Bankers. Yes. What's what's your take on this? Would you have a child with uh, uh, with your partner if you knew the child gets a cell? Okay, so 
Um, so I no, I will not have a child with sickle cell. The reason is that despite the advancement in science that has been touted all over the place, and despite everything else that we know of sickle cell disease, it's quite a debilitating condition. And we many of us live the condition, many of us have access, we have privilege, and despite all of that, we are still struggling with it daily. And we know people who have all the means in this country and outside who get flown out of the country when they have a crisis, who go to the biggest and best private facilities, but then they still have the complications. Some of them still die um, due to certain um, prevent preventable factors. So yes, there's um, a lot of information out there. There are a lot of advancements out there, but then um, even in the US and in the UK and the developed world, there's still a very huge disconnect between the marvelous and exceptional things that are being done for sickle cell and then the very, very terrible things that are still happening with people living with sickle cell disease. So I think it's a very big gamble to um, attempt to have a child with sickle cell disease, knowing that no when you know it. For me, I think that we need to take advantage of the options that are available. So I would say that, as you, Johnny, has, have said, and uh, Madonna has also said, you, you already have children with sickle cell that perspective as a caregiver. I also have sickle cell disease and I have that perspective as a person living with sickle cell disease. So we need to make informed decisions about how we can ensure that uh, we prevent other people from going through the very same challenges. And it doesn't necessarily have to be by primary prevention. That is um, often not to date somebody who is, for example, AS, or opting not to date somebody with a, a compatible, a non-compatible genotype, because there are so many options, right? So for example, we go out there, we tell people who are AS, AS about what they are, the percentages of having a child with sickle cell disease means. But then just as Prisca said that in relationships, we treat uh, people with sickle cell as if they are patients or less than, humans in the same way we need to treat adults with sickle cell who are in relationship like they are human beings like they are people not as people who are just out to have children they are full thinking human beings who can decide on their own whether in the case of this child they don't mind having a child with sickle cell or in my case we absolutely mind having a child with sickle cell and then we have the autonomous decision. So for me, who absolutely minds? Do I want to have, for example, IVF with genetic selection, such that I will choose the sperm and the egg and the embryo so that I don't have a child with sickle cell? Will I go in and have um, get pregnant naturally and test the fluid around the baby? And once the sickle cell is detected, detected terminate that pregnancy and try again. Will I adopt? Will I? Uh, try the other options that are available, you understand? So the fact of the matter is that we know what the cell does, we know how it affects the body, even from bed, and even from around six, nine months. And so once there are other options, I think that it's very good to try to prevent it. And that prevention doesn't have to be in one particular way. It doesn't have to be don't date a particular type of person. It can be date whoever, marry whoever, but try these other options, you understand? So for me, that is where I stand. Okay, okay. So that, that actually takes us right into our next question. Um, would you prefer other alternatives to having kids or do you just want bi biological? I think you've already told us what you think. So um, let me go to Priska. Do you want to have only, only biological kids or would you like to have try other ways? Maybe adopt or IVF, no. how would you do it? Um, I, I don't mind if I have kids um, from other source, like maybe adoption. No, I don't mind at all. But like I said from the beginning, I don't even want to give this. So 
I can adopt. Okay, what if you adopt and this child has maybe sickle cell? So it's it's all part of the thing. But then I would like I would like to adopt. Yeah. Okay, Isaac. Yeah. I think Isaac has, Isaac's situation is very different. He has a partner who does not have, um, who, who, who is what, um, not sickle cell positive, right? Yes, please. Good for you. So for you, you I'm sure you prefer the, the, the natural way, the biological, biological yes, way. Yes, please. Okay. If not, I'll go. You go? But, uh, Okay. Because right now, mm -hmm. me and my partner, we are not normal. So, they are not what? Sorry. Your line is still quite bad. Yeah. yeah, we can barely hear you at all, Isaac. So, so let me just move on to Auntie Mary. Yes. If you want, it's like you are the only person that is hearing Isaac. So tell us what Isaac <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't hear what Isaac said at all. So I'm just moving on to answer Mary for now. <laughs> okay. If it becomes oh, okay. necessary, if it becomes necessary and there is that means I would opt for, I will go for the other options. Yeah. Either I'll okay. get pregnant naturally and then uh, do a selective abortion like whatever any other option that is available that i can cater for or i can yes i can cater for financially i'll opt for that but to go and have another sickle cell child no i wouldn't want to bring any other child into the world to come and go through this thing again no, no. so what if your partner who you love so much and adore and everything says whatever you do we're going to have a child in the natural way. How, how would you react? Oh, uh, what I would do, I can present the options available to him. If he's still not uh, okay with it, why not? You go your way, I go my way. Okay, so you rather break up than have the, have yes. the child? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Isaac, let's try, try your line again. What would you do if, let's say, if, for example, you, you are living with sickle cell, your partner is living with sickle cell, and your partner says we have to have a child biologically, like the natural way. What would you do? Uh, Sorry, what did you say? That would suggest your line is very bad. I had you suggest something, I didn't hear the rest. You might have to reposition yourself. Or if you like, you just you can log off and log back on, and we'll uh, uh, we accept. Uh, we'll add you back. Okay. Okay. Doctor Bankers, what would you yes. do? You stop at academy. So what would you do? Um. Sorry, what was the question again? If your partner, who you love and adore and glorify, and all those good things, says, whatever happens, let's have a child the, the natural way. What would you do? I mean, on a personal level, I don't intend to have kids the natural way, personal on my own personal level, okay. because of how sickle cell. I like, and maybe it's my personal experience as a health worker and how I see uh, women with sickle cell disease go through the pregnancy process. I mean, I'm, there are successes. There are people who have had it okay, but then I also see a lot of people who struggle with it. And knowing my body and my struggles with sickle cell disease. I don't, on a personal level, intend to go through the process biologically, naturally, already. So if there's somebody who does not understand that for me, then I don't even think that to, we, 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 that we are meant to be together because you need to understand that this is a personal health decision that I don't intend to go through this process for already. Just and this is not to dissuade other people from, like ladies with sickle cell, from giving birth on their own. Because again, so many people go through the process and are, they have their baby, they come out successfully. But then at the same time, I, I'm also be called to go to the maternity unit and see the few who don't make it and 
those like there are specific interventions that we have to put in place to ensure that these women come out alive. And so um, um, maybe I have PTSD, maybe I'm scarred based on that experience. But then on a personal level, I don't intend to go through this process naturally. However, I intend to have biological children. So that's the caveat. And so based on that, my answer to the original question is that I'll have biological children and I'll go through surrogacy. So okay. that's how I intend to go through this process. And then if I need to, based on my partner's genotype, I can have IVF for genetic selection if it is necessary. Okay, thank you. Miss World. I know no one can force you to do anything you don't want to do. So what would you do? Exactly. So I wouldn't like to give birth because even um, having my mens on a monthly basis, uh, basis right, it's very difficult. Just menstruation and you go through so I'm like, ah, so what if I'm pregnant? So I wouldn't like to try that at all. So <laughs> I will go with the adoption. Like I still stand by it. But then if in the process, like at the moment, trying to prevent being pregnant. But if anything can happen in life, if it should happen, why not? I'll do this. Okay, all right. And anything can happen in life. So those of you in relationships. Oh, sorry, Isaac, I think you're back. Can you, can you say something so we can hear you? Please. Sorry, say something again. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, it's much better than before. Okay. So, so what if... Mm -hmm. I think I'll go in for abduction. I will explain things where... Okay. In abduction of death. I will yes. so what, what if your partner insists on having a... A uh, uh, natural birth, like normal pregnancy and birth. What would you do? Yeah, it's, uh, no challenge and then the complaint of having a sickle cell. It's not easy. So maybe our our experience to be for adoption. And if or the person do it. And the person that just wants a natural birth, would you stick stay with the person or would you leave the person? I'll let her go. Let her go. Yes. Yeah. Um, Dr. Bankas, would you let your partner go? Absolutely. Okay. Miss World, what about you? Priska. Okay, my relationship doesn't it's not just based on childbirth. I have yeah. a very like different. Oh, I, oh, I understand. Yes. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Let's just say your relationship was based on childbirth. Would you let your partner go if he insists on having a a baby with you the natural way? No. Oh, you stick with the person. Yeah. Okay, that's that's interesting. Um, Johnny, can I yeah. make a point here? Sure. Hey, I'll let you go. Actually, I uh, you know the person group. Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, I don't get you. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, I actually, okay. I actually like the what Miss Miss Wall just said that her relationship is just is not built on just childbirth. And this is something that we need to reiterate that anytime the topic of relationship comes up in the sickle cell disease space, the default assumption is about childbirth. But mm -hmm. then there are people who legitimately enter relationships and have absolutely no interest in childbirth. There are people who will be together in a relationship and not have children together. And it may be actually due to fertility issues, but then there are people who don't want children together or don't want children by themselves. And so we need to respect their autonomy and like the, 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 the thought process of adults living with sickle cell disease. That when an adult with sickle cell says, I'm in a relationship or I'm going to date someone, your first thought shouldn't be, what about, what if your child gets sickle cell or what is the genotype of the person you are dating? What if I'm just in that relationship for um, so like company? 
for the yes. emotional support. What if that relationship is not intended to be for marriage? We are just there at this time to keep each other company. We are not trying to have kids together, you know. But it's like anytime somebody is supposed to say something, the, relationship, the first thing you talk about is um, what's the genotype of the person. Um, what, it's not always about that. Sometimes it's not. We do, it's not about kids. You understand? And even if it were about kids. Why why are you always talking about that? Can you leave the people alone to talk about that when it gets to that time? Because again, we are adults living with a condition, we are autonomous. And sometimes the thing that you think bothers you so much bothers us a lot more. And so if you as a person who is not experiencing what we are experiencing feel so passionately about it, then you can rest assured that we feel even more passionately about it. And so must have considered it way before you. But sometimes it's really not about procreation. It's just about company at that time, you understand? And so I think that it's, again, it's about the respect and not seeing people in sickle cell disease as patients or as less, but seeing them as a total human being who needs company and needs support and needs other things, you know? And then you not just think about this person sickle cell in a relationship, oh my God, the first thing they're going to do is pass on the gene. Just respect them as an actual human being who maybe sometimes needs somebody to be around them. Thank you. Okay. So so that means, so I think that means, uh, on to our next question. So society or our, our culture has influenced how we look at relationships then. Because I think in our, our society, as soon as you're in a relationship, first question, when I get married, Second one, when I when I having babies, so do you think that that would, would it, it, it impact how you look at relationships going forward? Um, actually, I think that we it's it's to a greater extent in sickle cell than for the average person, because if um a guy a girl in I don't know university first year second year are dating, people are not on their case about getting married or about having children, but then you see any Body with sickle cell in a relationship and people have already jumped several steps ahead to be concerned about they passing on a gene to somebody meanwhile they are they are barely even talking they are barely even at the getting to know each other stage before they even talk about getting married before they even think about having kids together some of these people with sickle cell don't even have any interest in having children you know they are going through stuff themselves but then it's just the assumption that people with sickle cell will carelessly pass on the gene to other people, that's bothersome for me. So yes, in our setting, we are very concerned about procreation and we are always in those business about uh, when are you getting married and when are you going to have children. But it seems like there's an additional interest in people with sickle cell and their relationship status with respect to they passing on the gene haphazardly, kind of. And yeah. the same way there's that kind of insensitivity and pressure for people who are AS. Like, you know, like when you are out there and maybe someone says I'm AS, and then they are saying that they are about to get married, everybody's in their case like, hey, you are AS, your personal AS. You know how it's out there? Just think about it to a more exaggerated extent when somebody's SS and they say they are in a relationship. That, that seems to be an unconscious bias that is playing out. And people don't seem to realize that that's what they are doing. But it's a form of stigmatization and it needs to be checked. That's true. Um, Isaac, you seem to agree with Dr. Dr. Enam. Yes, please. You agree with everything said? Or did you have anything to add to what you said? Okay. Is this um, the family pressure? Yes, family pressure, but the only parent. So me, I don't have any pressure. Not for now. No pressure. Okay. Mary, I think I and you are in the same on the same in the same boat. Yes. <laughs> yeah, in the same boat. But then I yes. agree with um Dr. Bankers. 100% because I think that even as um, 
as an AA or AS or whoever. They should be left to decide of when to get married, who to get married to, and then as to whether they want to have kids or not. Uh, it shouldn't be about society saying this, society saying that, because they are people who are not in SS or AS, and then they, they, they go into relationship, basically just, just for companionship, not because they want to have kids. Okay, so I think it's, 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 it's about time we leave people to decide on what they want to do. Mm. The thing is, if, if there's some churches I've been to or some weddings I've been to, as soon as they get married, oh, we pray that they have kids. We pray that they have 20 <laughs> children. We pray that they have 50 children. And that puts a lot of pressure on them. Um, on, 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 just not even those living with sickle cell. It puts a lot of pressure on people in general. Because you, yes. you, you, you give them so much pressure. What if they, they don't want to have kids? What if they can't have kids? Then if it doesn't happen, you will say, oh, the devil is doing this, the devil is doing that. And it just... <laughs> It makes it very, very uncomfortable. It, it puts a lot of strain on the relationship as well. Yeah. Yeah, Miss World, what do you think? Okay, so, like, I love this question so much. First of all, being a woman or a girl child in the society is very difficult because everybody is in your business and they are like, when are you getting married? You are getting old and all that. And then, classical cell disease is a disaster. Like, I don't know. So this two, combining these two alone is natural disaster. Let, let me put it that way. Mm. But then, just like uh, Dr. Yeah, I will not I will not go into any relationship. It doesn't matter if you are AA or ZZ. I don't care what your gender is. I would, because I'm not coming in the relationship because I want to be dead. Because I want to get married. Like, Apart, when you take these things aside, when you take childbirth and marriage aside, like I'm a whole human being that I would like to live, like explore. People would like to give birth because when they die, they want um, people to remember that, oh, this is Pusquet's child. But then I want the situation whereby if I die, they say that, oh, this is Pusquet's legacy. Like this, when Pusquet was alive, she would have done this, that, that, that. So I'm living for me. Like me, I don't want to even think about childbirth or something. But then the women here are like, oh, I'm dating this guy. Then they are like, what is genotype? Like, can you leave me alone? Okay, yeah, so that's, that's my true. For me. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so do you think living with sickle cell has had a major impact on who you date and how you relate to your current partners, if you have current partners? Um, Auntie Mary. Hello, Auntie Mary, are you there? Yeah, please, please, can you repeat the question? I think Do I you think well. sickle cell disease mm. has had a, an impact on, on who you date? And if you're dating currently, how you relate to the person you're, you're with? Um, currently, I don't think I even want to have kids. That is that that is my um, my okay. personal decision. Yeah. So yeah. I don't even think I want to. I, I I'm not yeah. particular about who I want to date or who I want okay. to be. Yeah, because I don't want to even have kids. Okay. Okay. Uh, Isaac, I'm, I'm okay with just this one kid that I have. Okay. Isaac, what do you think? Please, a question again. Um, does sickle cell disease impact how you relate to your partner or does it impact who you, who you decide to date? Yes, for me, but I can't speak for my impact. Mm. Okay. Um, and then my brother is having a child, and me, I don't have. So I think the stress is not much, but it is an impact. So I would like to have any. Okay. Miss Well. 
I know for you, it doesn't really yeah, impact, does it? Uh, what? <laughs> what? What do you know? Is that you know what? This world to the I, world. <laughs> I don't think, um, for Miss World, from my interactions with her, I don't think um, so sickle cell has an impact on who she dates, does it? She doesn't let her No, it doesn't yeah, have. Yeah, exactly. Um, you don't let your condition. Yeah. Like, link, link up. Mm-hmm. Yes. It doesn't matter who comes into my life. And, and when I'm choosing somebody, I'll choose the person based on other things and not because of the person. And yes, okay. it's, it's, it's even. Yes, my partner being sickle cell, um, a sickle cell patient, when me being a sickle cell patient myself, like, yeah, there is a greater impact. Like, you, you could feel it that, yes, because everybody is trying to be very cautious so that the other person doesn't get sick. This one is also trying to protect you. Like, have you taken your medicine? Like, you see, so we still feel the impact, but not in a way that, like, others might feel it. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Bankas, what about you? Yeah, and for me, it, it does. But then I've seen a paradigm shift in my thinking because before I was very strict about you have to be AA, AA or nothing else. Then I started to reconsider what I've been teaching other people, the, the information I've been giving to others, and how it seems people critical that I've been telling people about the fact that and get information, know all your options, and then make an informed decision. But then I have all the information, and then I'm not applying it. So then once now I know about the options available, I know that you can get tested and then um, do the um, amniocentesis, chorocentesis with selective abortions. You can do the IVF with genetic selections. So now it's no longer an all or nothing. You don't have to be AA. All you need is to have an A, right? Because that's all I need. I need an A to combine with my S or my C and my child will have a trait. And so now I've empowered myself to make that informed decision. And so that paradigm shift has occurred such that I've not put myself in that box that you have to necessarily have to be AA. The only thing is that I'm not as bold as Krista where um, I'm going to people who have sickle cell disease themselves because unlike her, I still want a biological child. So that's the only difference between Prisca and I. But then in saying all of this, the critical thing is that I'm not just saying it for the sake of saying, because in educating people about making informed decisions, a key part of it is preparing towards that informed decisions. So I'm talking about here, the person doesn't necessarily have to be an AA, they can have just an A and anything else. But then it involves planning. It involves getting the money ready. It involves making inquiries and knowing that this is how much I need and this is how much I'll need to save to get the money. And this is what it will involve. And that my partner has to be in agreement with me to do IVF with genetic selection. So if you go and say that you want to do these kinds of things and you go and get a person who doesn't even agree with surrogacy, I know you are just talking into the air and the thing that you are saying will not happen. So in all the making informed decisions and knowing about the options and selecting the options, you also have to select a partner who agrees with them. Other than that, then in the end, you can know everything and want to do anything possible, but then in the end, you will not be able to implement any of them. So a lot of planning ahead, putting yourself a good financial position, ensuring that your family is in agreement with you, because there are some families that will never agree to you adopting into their home. They will never agree to you doing surrogacy. They will never agree to you doing IVF. If you know that's not your home, then some of the things you are talking about, you know that, okay, yes, there are options. We can make informed decisions. But some of these informed decisions, they don't I mean, mine is So your line okay. just went low. Oh, okay. Sorry. Where did you lose okay. me? We can hear you now. Yeah. Yes, I was, I was saying to... that. So, yeah. So, despite the fact that there are so many options and we can make informed decisions, 
we are all different. Our social circumstances are different. Our family, our finances, everything is different. So sometimes not all the options are available to all of us. So you need to position yourself such that even though we are seeing all of these things that are now available, if you personally are not in a position to be able to, for example, use the IVF option or use the selective abortions because maybe you are ethically op opposed to because say you're a Catholic, then you know that in your peculiar circumstances, you are, you are stuck with the um, primary prevention, which is the choosing somebody who is AA, you understand? But somebody else has that option to do that idea for genetic selection or to do that selective abortion, just that it's not you. But then it doesn't mean that you should also say that it's not an option because somebody else can choose that option and it's a valid option. That's true. I think I haven't reached your level yet. I have done my research, but it still scares me to think that I could do the, what do you call it? The IVF and the genetic selection. But what if the baby turns out to be, to be SS? I don't think I could go through that emotional torture of having to lose a baby, then trying again. Let's say, God forbid, it happens four times, five times. I don't That's think very valid or even like I could I, I I could I could go through that. So it's like you said, it's a personal choice in the end. So everybody has to choose for choose for themselves. So Isaac is having network issues. So maybe Isaac can you maybe can type type if you have any any points to make. We'll, we'll read them out. Okay, so now yes. Go ahead. Yeah, it's very valid. And so I think that, so with this, what you can do is to do more research and look at other facilities, maybe outside the country. And that will mean that you have to invest more into the procedure, you know? So you give yourself time and then you save up for it. But if it means that much to you, you've had this first experience with a child with sickle cell, you know how much it means to you to not have another child with sickle cell. And so you are, you are willing to go all out for this. As you said, for now, your option is that you want to do the primary prevention. So that's a valid option. But then if you want to try other options, then you start early, you start working towards it, you start doing the research, you start saving towards it, you start finding the facilities that can do it for you and preparing adequately towards it. So that's, that's why that education and making an informed decision, that's how we practicalize it, not just talking about it. Yes, you're right. You're very right. So, just a, a random, a different question: What do you guys should, What do you guys look out for apart from the sickle cell disease when you're looking for a partner? Let me start with Priska. And Isaac, you can type your 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 your, your answer. Okay, so. Um, unlike others, what actually get me closer to get me close to guys or like people I would like to date is education. Like if the guy is educated, oh my god, I'm okay, I'm good to go. <laughs> I don't okay. know, but that's what I <laughs> that's what I look out for. I don't know, but this is my thing. Like I love educated people. Yeah, so that's mm. That's good. Um, Auntie Mary, what about you? What are you looking for in a man apart from sickle cell? Companionship. 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 Good companionship. Sorry, can you hear what you're saying? Companionship. Companionship. Then, Sorry. Okay. Yes, good communication. Okay. Someone, someone I can easily call or get in touch with if I have a bad day or a good day. Yeah. Such a person, but um, if you have that, I'm good. Okay. Dr. Bankers, what about you? What are you looking yeah. for? Your, your, your dream man. Maybe I'll find <laughs> one for you. Oh, so the things I'm looking for are not the things I need. And it's now that I've, I'm realizing it. So what I'm beginning to appreciate is that what I need is patience and empathy and maturity. Those are the things I need. The things I'm looking for, they are very 
<laughs> the things I look out for are not those, but then maturity because I, um, I, I tend to be very whimsical. So maturity. then a lot of patience with me and my emotions then empathy because there are going to be a lot of times where I'll be unwell and I'll, I, I just need someone to be there and to understand and to support me. And I have to say that the person I'm with currently is very, it's all of that, you know, it's everything I've mentioned and it's based on those the, the traits that this person has that I'm mentioning these things. And as I'm saying, they are not things that I sought out for in him. But then I'm appreciating those things in him because they are, they've been very, very useful to me in the time that we've dated. And I, and I really appreciate them because, again, when you are really unwell and down, it, it's, it's really helpful to have those things and it's like that kind of support around you. So, yeah, it makes, it makes a world of difference. Okay. Isaac is looking for his partner to be supportive willing to understand this pain and also companionship. So it looks like the common theme to this is understanding and companionship, if I'm not mistaken. And Priska, someone has a question. So what if the ideas of Sliva, would you consider them? Or you want university pen? No, like no, that's, that's- Wait, no, that's that's a, you want, you want No, I can't, no, I can't do some music. Okay. Even as it is, uh, nah. <laughs> that, I said I love education. Yeah, so first of all, have education. Then maybe we can talk about maturity and the other stuff, you see. I, mm. I love educated guys. Like growing yeah. up, I saw something and maybe that changed my whole perspective. So, mm -hmm. yes. What if, then, what, if, what if he's educated but close-minded? You know, some people are, have gone to school, sir, but their minds are small. Yeah, I know those people you are talking about. Exactly. <laughs> so, so no, I don't, I don't like those, yeah, I don't like those kind of people. Mm -hmm. So please yeah, consider the JSS graduates. So. As, you, as you consider, okay, like you said, it depends. Sometimes you get close to somebody and then, like the way I'm seeing, um, I'm sorry to say, but the way I'm seeing maybe school dropouts, the way they behave with their girls, it's not something that I, I would like to find myself in but maybe i could meet someone um and the person will be more patient like everything i want but my next education so as time goes i i never say never anything can happen in life so yeah okay but so, then so you you're talking to, out of experience yes exactly so you have to um cheat me well of course like and i love to be prompted i'm, I'm always right no matter what, I'm always right. Just say sorry and let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you're always right. <laughs> That's interesting. I'm always right. Yes. Yeah, so, so to the gentlemen who are asking, she's always right. So if you had, if you want the chance, just say yes and so you're yeah, sorry, even if she's wrong. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so um let me give um we're almost out of time. So let me give everybody a, a chance to give their final statements. Let me start with Auntie Mary. Oh, in, in, in terms of this topic, what do you have to tell us? What, what should we know? What should we learn? Oh, I think uh, if being a sexual cell doesn't make you, doesn't, shouldn't limit you. Yeah, and then don't be in a haste to get into a relationship. I think you just have to relax. Okay. And work on yourself. The right person will surely come. The person will show up. Mm -hmm. not, uh, you have to, you just have to get into it. No, 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 no. Just take it, it uh, slowly and then the right person will just come. Okay. Isaac, start typing. Uh, I'm waiting for your for you for yours. Um Dr. Bankers. Um, yes. So I want to say that. Adults with sickle cell disease, and in fact, everyone with sickle cell disease needs to be respected as a whole human being and their autonomy needs to be respected. Um, relationships with, for people with sickle cell disease 
shouldn't be put into one box and defined by the progeny that come out of it or be assumed to be um, a way to spread the condition. People with sickle cell disease have their own minds and um, are also concerned about passing on the disease to their children because we live the condition. Most importantly, there are options and all these options are valid, right? So let's all learn about the options. The fact that an option is not open to you based on your ethnicity, your religion, your location, your personal beliefs doesn't make it wrong. There are people who use primary prevention, that is choose a particular genotype because that is the only option that works for them. But then there are other people who can choose all the options because none of them is, um, doesn't work for them. The important thing is that we need to read about all the various options, learn about them, do the research and figure out which ones work for us. If your choice is to not have kids, it's a valid option. You can date whoever you want. If your choice is to have kids, that's also fine. But then because of that, decide early. Are you going to do primary prevention and based on that date somebody whose genotype is compatible with you? Are you going to adopt? Are you going to have IVF with genetic selection? Are you going to have amniocentesis, choreocentesis, and do selective abortions? Which of the options are you going to take? But in the end, let's all work together. Let's all take advantage of the information that's available to us. And let's all make an informed decision about everything that we are engaged in. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Isaac is saying things people should should respect our views as people living with sickle cell disease, please, which is a very valid point. If the person decides not to have children, respect his views or her views. If the person decides to have children, respect their views also, because it's not a, a, a one size fits all issue. Everybody has different views, different ideas, different backgrounds. So we should respect each other's views. Priska, what do you have to say? Tell me. Okay, so what I would I, I think Dr. Bankas has said it all. Like we should respect people living with sickle cell disease because like I'm a I'm a I'm a grown up. I know the pain. This is not someone telling me how it feels to be a sickle cell patient, but this is something I'm going through myself. So if I should come up with a decision, meaning I've thought about it like thoroughly, I didn't just get up one day and say, I wouldn't want to have kids or I would like to have kids with the post disease. But like I've lived for more than 25 years and then I think um, I've been thinking. And so when I come up with something, just because my genotype is SS doesn't make it wrong automatically. Like now, I've invested time in that thought or in that decision making. Even if it's not, if we say these things and we feel like most of the time it comes with, it comes from um, just friends or people from my father, but sometimes our own parents. I remember when I told my mom, that, oh, mommy, my boyfriend has sickle cell disease. She was quiet on the phone for about 30 minutes. She couldn't talk. I was like, ah. This is my life. Like you've lived yours. You wanted one kid. No one questioned you. You have just me and your fine. So I can also do what I want. So I think in that aspect, I would like yeah, people to understand more. Just nobody will get up one day and just make a decision. It's something that the person has thought about. So you just have to maybe listen to the person more and then you understand where the person is coming from. But don't just kill the person's spirit with no, you can't do this. No, that if you should bring that to me, you know, I'll not die. Okay, and then mm -hmm. I would also like to, um, what I would also like to say is everybody dating someone living with sickle cell disease, like you guys are doing fabulous, and we appreciate you guys a lot. I know you might be right, but Frisca is always right, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, so let me open this one to, to our audience also. 
Darlington, you've been here since the beginning. You're here right after I opened the, the page. What have you gathered from, from this our small discussion? Edmond Arthur, sorry, Edmond Samuel, the last of I'll come back, I'll come to you also. What do you guys have to, have to say about this? Please, Edmond used to be my sugar daddy. Hey, Edmond. Really? This Edmond, thanks, thanks for being here. <laughs> Edmond, you have been caught. Please, tell, tell us what, what you think. How, how was it being a sugar daddy? Give us that one first. Was she always yeah. right? <laughs> just ignore this lie. <laughs> just ignore this lie. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it's been informative. Yeah, it's been an informative discussion. You know, um, I'm not I'm not, I'm not a typical self person, but my friend Priska is, and I think all, all all you guys have said is is true. Um, we need to stop uh, stigmatizing against them. We need to stop uh, being over. I think the word is overprotected. That's the word. We need to stop being overprotected. We need to listen to them more. And before we say anything, we need to make sure we are not being uh, over, or like saying things like we what you think. It should be what you think or what I've heard. It should be more of what a person feels. Because at the end of the day, it's the person who's going through it, it's not you. That's it. Whatever you say, whatever I do, you're not the person with the sickle cell issue. It's the person with the issue. So let, let the person take decisions they feel is okay with them. All you can do is to support. That's what I can say. Yeah, right. Thank you very much, Edwin. Thank you for joining our meeting. Thank uh, you Samuel. for being very supportive, okay? It's like... <laughs> hey, this guy, this guy is okay. This guy is okay. Yeah, he has moved on. <laughs> um, Samuel, are you there? I'm a year pound, Jack. I was not going to... Samuel. Oh, Della? Sefako? Okay, I think you, uh, Darlington. Okay, I think those of the, those here are not able to, to speak. So thank you guys so much for joining. We appreciate your time, your contributions. Those of those are our, our panelists also. Why is my camera so blurred? Can you guys see me? Okay, there you go. Okay, it's better now. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah, so thank you every, everybody for joining those on Facebook also. Actually, let me check. Do you have any questions on no, Facebook? Can, can I? Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Good evening to you guys. Good evening, Okay, sir. so um, what I've learned um, this evening is um, before without sickle cell, I think um, it's the mindset that we have to get because society will always interfere in your business. Even That's when, not, yeah, so is the mindset. Maybe choosing a partner, creating procreation, and all those things. I think is the mindset because society or whatever they will always, even your family, when you are telling them maybe you are thinking about adopting or having other options, they will, they will put themselves into it like, oh, this is not good for you. This is, they'll always do what they think is better for you. So I think with or without sickness, uh, the, mind, the mindset is always the solution. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I think you're right. It's not only about living with sickle cells, it's just in general. Because if, if you want to follow what other people think, you will never be happy. So do what you do what you think is right and try to live for yourself, like you said. I really like that. That was, that was good. Oh, okay. We have a message from Sefako. We have um, an upcoming summit for caregivers. So if you'd like to register, um, you can just talk to Sefako. It's a paid it's a paid event, but Sefako has been given some some free slots. So just reach out to Sefako on the page, and he will register you. Okay, so I think anybody else, else having anything to say before we sign out? Okay, thank you very much once again for joining our Let's Talk, let's you. Let's talk Sickle Cell uh, discussion. I appreciate all of you and I hope you've learned something good today. Please go out and, sp and spread the word. Whatever you've learned today, don't keep it to yourself. Go and share it with other people so that everybody will also get um, educated. Thank you very much for joining and have a very good weekend. Edmond, I need money also, Charlie, if what's up.
Just tell me, you know, I'll message you. I'll send you my memo number. number. <laughs> Isaac, Thank I'm not messaging you, Johnny. You. Isaac, I'm Mr. Johnny. Thank you, Isaac. Have a good weekend. Bye. See you guys for our, 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 our next discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.